guys, this is a crypto phone. Don't buy it. Let's check it out from uh, MKBHD. Okay. All right. So energetic explosive music. You, you turn this on for um. I mean, you turn subtitles on for this. So oh, this is a crypto phone. Whoa. And I know what you're thinking. What the hell is a crypto phone, and why would anyone want that? And that's exactly what I was thinking when this first crossed my radar. So this is an upper mid-range Android phone with crazy material choices. For mid-range? Okay, I, I do like the uh, little um fingerprint reader on the back. My phone currently has it. From a brand you've never heard of with some specific crypto features built in. Such as what, bro? You can't just like download the app? That launched at a thousand dollars now i know oh my I gosh bro it looks like a freaking hundred dollar phone not gonna lie i have been notably uh skeptical on crypto and web3 and blockchain and the metaverse and all that sort of stuff over the past couple of years so you same here bro but i learned about bitcoin when it was two hundred dollars and now 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 look how much it is bro i'm down bad i'm down bad may consider me biased but i still think if you took the crypto out of this phone it would at least have potential i'm serious let me explain so the story of this phone actually starts all the way back with the essential phone so i don't know you know i hope I, I, at least i'm getting uh, eight gigs of ram with a freaking thousand dollar phone how many y'all remember the essential Wait, phone? Wait, yo, the back of it looks back good. Wait, no, that's a different phone, though. But that was a really interesting and exciting new development in the smartphone world. We don't get that many genuinely promising new phone companies coming along and doing good... Tesla app on there, bro. ...good things, but that's exactly what this Andy Rubin startup was promising when they came out with their first phone. It was uh, just this refreshing sort of minimal design. There were no protruding camera bumps. No big logos or brand. I like it. I like it, guys. They were one of the first to do this camera notch here at the top of the screen with the thin bezels. And they were one of the only ones using these super premium materials, the titanium rails and polished ceramic on the back. And then it just had some pins on the back with some magnets for attaching some modular accessories. Just some genuinely interesting, really cool ideas on top of some super clean software. Now, unfortunately, this experiment... Bad, not bad. And didn't really catch on you know that's unfortunate with the with the you know the tech giants he has to go against it makes sense in a combination of high price mediocre cameras not that strong of a feature set for regular people to care launching as a sprint exclusive all of this led to extremely low sales and then the company would go on to dynamite itself after a bunch of info about andy rubin comes out and so we would not get to see a second try an essential phone too. Now, it sucks to see a promising company with a ton of talent just disappear like that. But something that happens a lot, a lot of times when these businesses dissolve, is the teams that worked on stuff sometimes will pop up somewhere else and work on something else. And so sure enough, in 2020, a bunch of the engineers from the original essential team got back together to form a new company called Awesome, and they would announce their first Guys, would you buy the awesome phone? <laughs> Reminds me of the nothing phone, guys. Hey, people do like them. Yeah, the nothing phone, actually, you know, it's mildly successful now. First project, the awesome OV1. Basically the spiritual successor to the essential phone. And you can see a lot of similarities and continuity in this announcement. They talked about these crazy materials again, this titanium and polished ceramic and the rectangular design. But they also then tried to correct a bunch of the things that doomed the original essential phone. Oh, Ozum, Oso M. Okay, that's what it's called. It is noticeably bigger and with a bigger screen, bigger battery, etc. But, shocker, they didn't really get enough interest in this brand new startup phone to be able to bring this whole idea back to life. It's the classic enthusiast phone problem where like it's a cool idea and some people really, really want it, but there's not enough hype to be able to make the whole thing happen. That is until Solana came along. So Solana is a Web3 company. Look He's getting to the, the bottom of this company-wise, man. I like it, I like it. Solana, mentioning all the companies. 
That's good. That's good. All right, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. For new projects. And awesome is this hardware team. I, I really like the name of it. You know, awesome, nothing phone. Looking for some backing to make this phone happen. So Solana would bring the cash and bring their backing. Awesome would bring their hardware talent. And they'd partner together to turn the OV1 into this rebranded Solana Saga crypto phone. And it would be a thousand dollars and uh that's this phone right here so all right where do we start there's basically three things that make this a crypto phone instead of just another regular android phone it's the solana mobile stack the seed vault and the d app store so okay outside of those things this ov1 or the solana phone is actually a very average Android phone. Like specs wise, it's a Snapdragon 8 so Plus. If it's, if it's average phone spec wise, I don't want it, bro. Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. I don't know, I don't know much about the mobile processors, guys. It's Gen 1, so that would be last year's flagship chip. Not, not bad though. Then 12 gigs of RAM. Oh, okay, half. okay. 12 gigs of RAM, guys. It's really good. Terabyte of storage. All yeah, a terabyte, not bad as well clear if it's fast UFS 3.1, but it's a nice big... Hey, as long as it's point, Android point 13 and above, we're good, right, guys? 6.67 inch flat 1080p 120 hertz display 20 hertz? at the front. Ooh, that gets decently snap, bro. Go, bro, my phone's like 90 hertz or something. Right, but it is not LTPO. It's just a fixed refresh rate. And then it's powered by a 4100 milliamp hour battery with wireless charging. Not bad. Not great for the size of this screen, but not tiny. Uh, but I, it's also freaking a thousand bucks. I get I could get a new Pixel for like four hundred bucks, guys. A Pixel Seven. Tiny, and then it's IP68 water and dust resistant with a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. But then a pair of really mediocre cameras on the back. It's got the same fifty megapixel main camera sensor that's in the ROG Phone Seven and the Oppo Find X5 Pro, but with worse software. And that's paired with a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, both of which can pretty much only produce in perfect lighting, after which things fall apart very hey, quickly. Not bad, better than my camera though. I'll take this phone any day, guys. With a lack of detail, excessive noise, just no really impressive strengths. Just a really very heavily mixed. Kind of yikes though. Kind of yikes at the camera. Bag here. But there are two things about this phone that actually I'm very impressed by, that I really like. Okay, number one is the materials. He, he has not talked a single thing about uh, the crypto set part of it yet. You know, that's the title and stuff. Just this world class. He's saying don't buy it, guys. When he's talking, you know, yeah, I think it's pretty good so far. It's build quad. Because like I said, it's basically <laughs> the same team, the awesome OV1 team that came from the original Essential phone. And so they have this affinity for super high quality materials. So we're talking matte stainless steel frame with colored titanium buttons and a full ceramic back which yes picks up i would still put um a case on it a finger not trying to mess up my phones guys not whatsoever other than the fingerprint reader but dude this phone is a tank this phone is also very heavy <laughs> It weighs like 250 grams, which is more than an iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's got these nice squared off sides that I really like. There's absolutely no squeaking, creaking, flexing at all. It's just this hilariously well-made packaging of these average specs. But then two, the other thing I really like, aside from the crypto stuff, the software itself, once you get into it, is actually extremely clean. Very clean, like stock Android. So it is Android 13, and who knows when it'll get Android 14, if at all, but you can dig through everything, and it is very- Man, if I'm buying a new phone, I, I, I want at least one freaking Android op update, man. Very quick and res- I just barely got on Android 13, or, or maybe 12, I forget exactly. Responsive and clean everywhere. It's the stock Android quick settings, the stock Android wallpaper and customization screens, all these stock Google apps, the, the clock, the calendar, Chrome, everything. Now, does any of this ju hey, just like uh, any kind of standard phone at nowadays, right, guys? Justify a thousand dollar price tag. <sighs> okay, well, let's see. Not really, guys. Come on. 700 bucks, maybe? 600? It's got last year's flagship spec, 
kind of weak cameras, weak battery, not that amazing of a screen, but it's stock Android and good build. Not really worth a thousand bucks, right? So that's why literally less than a year after it came out, the price plummeted from a thousand to six hundred dollars. So now the real question is, would you pay? Would anybody pay? No, nah, we're going for the pixel, bro. All day. Six hundred dollars for a barely above average, well built Android phone that happens to have some crypto. I will buy it for four hundred if only it, we can upgrade to the next Android version. Crypto features built in. I guess this is the part where I have to go over all of the crypto and Web three. Finally, finally, seven minutes into eleven minute video. We, we get into the crypto features. All right, all right. Features. So, all right. Like I mentioned earlier. Man, I, I know, don't know much about crypto except the prices. There's three things that make this a crypto phone. So the Solana mobile stack is an SDK for apps to connect to the Solana blockchain. Which if you don't know what SDK means, we mean software development kit. I know it's like, you know, to make software, I guess. Which, I mean, it's cool that it's built in, but the obvious downside being this does not work with any other blockchain. So no Bitcoin, no Litecoin, no Ethereum. This is just focused on the Sol I've never heard of Solana before in my life, though. Solana blockchain. Then the Seed Vault is basically dedicated storage of a 24 phrase seed stored in a secure environment. Uh, environment where the Android OS cannot see them, so that would let you unlock your wallet. And then the last feature is something I've been calling a dApp store, which is literally a second app store on this device that's specifically for crypto apps, crypto focused stuff. So, so if you, stuff you can find on the regular app store, guys? So Yikes. Tim wallet is on here. Uh, for a second, I thought I saw a uh, solitaire on there, bro. I was like, what? Uh, OKX, a crypto exchange is on here. Brave Browser, things like that. There's an app called Minty Fresh that lets you turn photos from your camera roll into NFTs in a few seconds and a few clicks. Yeah, that's pretty cool. If you're into that, I guess. But those are the only three things that really make this a crypto phone. And one of them, the dApp store, is not really even that special because it is coming to other phones and you'll be able to get it on a non-crypto phone. So there's that too. Now the other stuff- there you, there you have it, guys. Stuff, I think you can actually make an argument is really, really cool to have built into the phone and actually secure like that. And if you are in the Solana ecosystem, this is the only place you can get that stuff. But man, I feel like that's about the most niche feature possible. Like remember, we were just talking about the Zen phone. All right, doesn't appeal to my niche, guys. A phone can do so, can do everything almost, man. 10, how? I love that phone. It's a super great phone. It's just a shame it won't sell because not as many people like. <sighs> Guys, it's a niche phone. Like, you know what I mean? Niche phones don't really do good, do they, guys? Small phones. Do you think the number of people who are in the Solana ecosystem and want to buy a phone that. Guys, well, I'm going to look up Solana. What is Solana, guys? Web3 interest blockchain platform. Okay, okay. That has some of those features built in is greater than or less than the number of people who want a small phone. Basically, the number one coolest thing to come out of this project to me is exposing me to this thing right here, which is the uh, the cable that comes in the box okay. for this phone. This is a braided USB-C to USB-C cable, but not just any cable. At the end here is a hard switch that blocks all data and only lets power through, just, just making it a charging cable. And that's actually pretty sick. Yo, that's cool. Highly effective for preventing something called juice jacking attacks, where if you plug into like a public outlet somewhere, but that outlet is malicious and is gonna try to upload malware to your device or download photos or something, this cable will not let that happen, just blocks all data. So if you're- Yo, why don't I, why have I just heard about this, man? Plugging into an extremely rare public USB-C port, this is actually a great tool to have. But it's also not that special, and it's available on Amazon for like thirty bucks. So I'll thirty bucks. Also link that. That's too much. Hello. So at this point, I don't even have to really tell you, but the crypto phone is basically a pretty standard Android phone. Yeah, I, I always get worried if like you know someone's gonna hack me by plugging something in. Like literally, in the, whenever I order something off Amazon, uh, that's, that's 
I, I think it might have a virus on it or something. With a couple kind of cool but extremely niche crypto features for one specific crypto stack. One that happens to also be tanking pretty hard and has been tanking for Yikes. months. And I also don't even really have to tell you that there's... Looks like somebody made bank out the crypto and uh, decided to just make, release a phone and try to make more money with that crypto. Basically no reason for 99.99%. .99%. Now they got one of the biggest YouTubers making a video about it, so hey. ...and of people to buy this. Even if you were to try to buy this phone just for a nice, clean, stock Android phone and just totally ignore all the crypto features, you can get a lot more phone for 600 bucks for the same price you could get a Pixel 7 or probably a Pixel 8 by the time it comes out. Pixel 7 for the win. You could get a refurbished Galaxy S23. You could get any number of one. I'll go with the open box one. One plus phones. I just don't think this is anywhere near the top of the list for 600 bucks. And really, that's that's the shame of it. Being a brand new phone company is really hard, unless your name is Carl Pay, apparently. <laughs> and so I wish there was a world where the awesome OV1 could just exist and could thrive and a small niche community could love it. But now instead, this becomes the perfect embodiment of crypto in 2023. At best, ahead of its time. But at worst, completely useless to most everyday people and gives whatever else is going to follow it an even harder uphill battle. Yeah, we ain't getting that, bro. But thank you for telling me not to buy it. It's not like I had money to buy it. <laughs> Alright, guys. The price plummeted from 1000 to 600 in less than a year. Well, it is really early as crypto. <laughs> Absolute nerd! Suck my dick, I'm better than you.